Mr. Ivri Gikli, Mr. Chaim Tau. Shalom, welcome to Culture Bug. And thank you for hosting us here with you at Keshet Elon. Uh, the master course for violin and string instruments. Uh, I would like you to tell us uh, how you started coming here to the master course and when, how long is it that you have been teaching here? Well, it took me a, a car, it took me about two and a half hours from Tel Aviv. How long did it take you to come here? 145. 145? Shorter. That's shorter. How did you fly? No. <laughs> did you take a helicopter? No. Did you go by foot? A Mercedes. Ah, Mercedes. Did you, know, did you know that Mercedes was named after a Jewish woman? was a wife or something of the, of the Mercedes who made the Mercedes. I don't know how they called it during the war. Did they call it Mercedes? Why not? A Jewish name? A Jewish name. Yeah. Uh, and how many, for how many years have you been coming to Keshe I had about 2,000 years, no? Really? 2,000, he came 2,000 without three, three zeros. Thank you, two, two well, zeros. Get, <laughs> you want to give me his age? <laughs> my head. Never mind. You are eternal. We can. Uh... I'm about that. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm something around that. This is not the first time. No. no and I... you have been teaching for much longer. Well, yes, much, much longer. Ivri has been teaching for four thousand years at least. Well, I tell you something. Jesus was born two thousand years ago. Don't forget that his name was Yoshua, and he used to speak probably Hebrew as well. So, you know, that's how it is. Uh, but I've been here about four, five, three she, or four. She four, asked five, you, not to uh, Jesus. Three or four. Well, I'm talking. She asked about you. Jesus, Jesus cannot talk anymore, so I'm talking. <laughs> For him, yes. So, yes, uh, yes. I want to know uh, what uh, brings you specifically to Keshet Elon. Is there something special about this? happening master course festival in terms of teaching that is different than teaching at home, in Europe, uh, in other places? Well, I don't know what Chaim is going to say. I said, I said it before. Were well, you there when I was in the there. club? I say I come here to learn. Because if I don't learn, I don't see how the others can learn in a way. And I find it a little pretentious to say, I am going to teach you how to do it. I think uh, if I learn something together, you know, I, I discovered it. I mean, I mean, mean it. I don't mean it as a kind of blah, blah, kind of, you know. It's, uh, that, that's the way I feel about it, in a way. And that's why it's very egotistic, in a way. I, 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 uh, I learn. And I think uh, it's quite a nice place to come to. It's near the Lebanese border, so it's nice and dense and flourish. <laughs> I would like to continue this. Thoughts. Our old sages said a wonderful sentence. I say it in Hebrew, and then I translate to English. When I learned from my from my students, I learned more than from my teacher. And this is right. You know, sometimes I get a young students, student. And he plays something, I said, my God, how come I didn't think of that? Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. Was, this little thing, you know, plays something that I never thought about. Well, I had this experience today. There was this girl, the first one who played, uh, so Isai Sonata. But I said, well, I said, what are you going to do? She says, Isai Sonata. Number three, I said, the ballad of course. Well, I, I knew that somebody's going to play. Inevitable, right? They were. And I heard it so many times. And suddenly I heard a girl who, who made it an intimate story. And I said to her, you know, his eye was a colossus, it was physically and, and everything. And uh, he, he wrote, the, and everybody plays it as if they think. But it's a very intimate thing. He, you know, he called his wife, my little chip, you know, the Lulu. And, uh, and, uh, and I, 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 she did things which really made me like I was, I was it. It was beautiful. Yeah. But you, see, you know, I also continue this, what he said. Nowadays, I feel that music is like Olympic Games. Mm. Faster, stronger, higher, that's what goes on. Music is kind of passe. That's, people don't make so much music. 
And when he hears like that, he says just about the ballad by Isai, in such an intimate way of playing it, he said, ah, uh, there's something to it. Because most people make, it, make an Olympic game out of it, which is not. Music is not Olympic games. The composer that wrote the piece, right, thinking what he's doing, you know, exactly what he wants to write, and we have to be the actors to act what he wrote. But we don't do it, that's the problem. But this is very funny. What is your name? Hila. Hila. But you were there when I talked, I said exactly yes. the same thing. I said at the end, I said, look, every note here was written by that composer, whether it is a great composer, not together, every note, and he, every note he meant something. Mm -hmm. Put it down. Of course. They don't yes. play it just like notes, because then they might turn against you. Right. Yeah, it's true. It's, you know, that's why I think, he, why I love him anyway, he knows it. I mean, love him, don't worry, I mean, I like, uh, I like him. I still, I still, see, are we, are we I still, still sit here, so come on. Yes. Where yeah. are, you are you enjoying yourself? Yes, but where it is the camera? Well, I don't see the on camera. On video. No. On video? It's not an Olympic camera. Bigger, I stronger. I want to say something stronger. about Olympics. You see, people talk, we talk about the Olympic Games. But today, maybe some people forget the Olympic Games came from Mount Olympus. And the Mount of Olympus is very beautiful. You know, yeah, you know, you, 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 there is such a, uh, uh, how to say, such a preoccupation with the thing and how to do it, so that you forget the reason why you do it. So I was going to ask along these lines that there seems to be, at least for beginner, for young musicians, maybe very young musicians, a certain tension maybe, I'm, I'm offering an observation, between the uh, technical virtuosity and the, the uh, soul of the music, the letting go, that you see a musician that works so hard to get all the notes right, and then, and then has to cut, there has to come something else that is more letting go, that is more maybe intimate. My question would be, um, how, how do you teach that to somebody? You don't teach that. First of all, I want to say, well, you know, we are too old. First of all, when people say the word virtuose, it's almost like, well, he's a baby, he made a good violence video or something, but he's just not a musician, it's a virtuose. But actually, if you think of the word virtuose, in French it would mean virtue that dares. That's the word, virtu, virtuose. Now, to be a, a, you know, a virtuose is an honor if you are. And if you are virtuous, then you, if you are a musician, you can be, you might also, you are a virtuous, because you are daring to say, daring to be and daring to play. And that is something which one should not forget. And uh, I, don't, I, I agree with absolutely that uh, there is a tendency, not just in music, you see, music is an expression of something which you feel. And the expression of the, an inner being of, of human being. And what is happening around us is also interesting, unfortunately, so many things. Today, you see, when I think, if you think about progress, you see, maybe a hundred or two hundred years ago, in order to kill a person, you needed one bullet. If you wanted to kill a hundred thousand people, you needed perhaps a hundred thousand bullets. Today, you have a little bomb and you can kill a million people. That's great progress. You see, in order to destroy a house, you have to practically take every little piece of the stone away. Today, with on bulldozer, you put, that's progress. But there is progress also, the possibility of progress in soul, and in thinking, and in vision, and the ability to go towards the end, to, until the end of your vision. That's possible. Unfortunately, the time is pressing so much. But people do say that time is money. They don't say money is time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and therefore, you want to get there as quickly as possible, and you just uh, burn all the steps towards it, and you just come to that. That is not the thing, because it takes time to breathe, it takes time to let the note live. And just before there was a boy who played very well, he started to play the, the adagio of the C major sonata. He played it very well. But I asked him that the note should be like 
You know, when you have bubbles, with soap bubbles, you let it out, you let it leave its time to end by itself. You don't have to kill it. It just comes out, and the sound let them live, you know, in the time. And that's also in everything. There was a time if you saw cars passing by, you would say, this is this one, this is this one. Today, they all look more as a lot. Because they all come from the same factory with different parts. You know, said mass production of thinking, mass production of thinking. For the speed. Mass production of not living. Okay. So a, a very so, clear uh, message of uh, patience. Do you want to say something to end? Because we have to close the uh, conversation. I want to say something about the, the virtuoso. <clears throat> I had a teacher. His name was Ivan Kalamian. Once I asked him, what do you expect from your students when they leave you? He said, I expect them to be professionals, which means if they play an orchestra, <clears throat> excuse me, or they play chair music, or they play solo, they should know how to play the violin. And then he added, and not everybody can be a Chrysler or a Seagate. But that's it. Of course. Okay, thank or you, you very much. you have it or you don't have it. Thank you very much uh, in the name of Culture Buzz and our audience abroad. Thank you.